that's news where, to me actually but where uh, <laughs> where you uh uh what what are your thoughts on uh some of the guys that we got out of the portal like evan stewart and whatnot where do you think those guys and the uh running back we got um where do you think they're gonna sit yeah yeah evan stewart is is someone that's really easy to get excited about um you know didn't have like unbelievable numbers or production at texas a&m but certainly some respectable production um and like he just had a little workout video that he posted today or i think is his uh wide receivers coach margin 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 or margin hooks uh posted and he's like the, he trains all the top wideouts that come out of texas and like the dude's footwork and twitchiness uh change of direction like it's hard not to be excited about a guy like that um you know i started hearing about them being a real ch- contender when he was coming out to campus and and just talking to some people like hey i think this might happen so that that very well could be their wide receiver one this year um that's probably the easy take to make but i want to see more from Treshawn holden at wide receiver because i think that he's someone who is really poised to make an impact because he didn't get a lot of opportunities necessarily last year but when he did he really made the most of them i felt like and and the fiesta bowl was obviously a great example um but that wide receiver room is going to be loaded as ever uh, hopefully we can see some of the young guys play early because that wasn't the case last year with, with jury on like we were talking about uh, Jay Harris uh, spaz who you're asking about yeah. you know I think he was someone who kind of caught some people off guard um, you know coming from Northwest Missouri State I don't think I could tell you a single player that I know that yeah, came D, from there D2 D2 I mean D, yeah, was, D2. Uh... <laughs> but I feel like he he kind of filled a little bit of a roster need he's the biggest back on the roster now I think like 6'2 215 so um, you know you lose Dante Dowdell but you gain a guy like uh, Jay Harris going to be a three-headed monster kind of a deal i think is the expectation with noah whittington and, and jordan james who i think i was writing about him earlier today like i don't know if if you know he's going to be around again after this season because he is playing really good football um but uh as far as jay harris you know people will say what they want to about him coming from a d2 school but carlos lachlan's got an eye for talent and uh hasn't let, it, let hasn't let Oregon down yet yeah exactly and i like- I guess that brings it in. I mean, uh, in the state of things, because I mean, obviously the recruiting and the transfer portal one, the recruiting class was amazing. And the the transfer portal was amazing. And that's removing Gabriel and more. We're just looking at other positions and it was still a really good fill. Who do you think is the most impactful recruit maybe that will come in and have like an instant impact with the team? So, Who do you so think, what, maybe? J- just to clarify, are you saying portal and high school or just high school? Just just the recruiting, the high school recruiting. Okay, just high school. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if we're looking at the the 24 class, um hmm, this is an interesting one. Um I don't want to go with the easy answer. I want to push myself a little bit here. <laughs> um I'm gonna do I'm gonna do two two guys that kind of come to mind. Um, I think Aaron Flowers is a guy that it's it's really easy to get excited about. Um, you know, I saw him out in San Antonio for the All American Bowl, and and he really looked the part. Uh, obviously, battle tested coming from the state of Texas. Um, you know, really decorated guy. Uh, it really felt like every time I saw an update about his high school team and their journey through the playoffs, like he was just kind of backpacking them, like he was the driving force that kind of kept them going. And an awesome kid. Um, you know, really, really fun to talk to, um, and great ball skills and just the ducks need a game changing safety. I think they, they got some great pieces, <clears throat> right. With, with Kobe Savage coming in as well, uh, from K state. But I think that in an era where the portal is becoming so popular, you, you needed to bring in some young talent. There are some guys that are going to be able to be game changers, program changers that are going to stick around for a while. Oregon's had some good safeties. Uh, in recent years, right, you had Evan Williams and Bennett Williams. Uh, Verone McKinley was great, but Javon Holland, I think, is really the standard that they're trying to work towards. And I think uh, you know Aaron Flowers is a guy that could could help you get you there. So I'm super excited about him. Um, and then I also think that um, uh, what else? Who did I? Who else did I have here? I was gonna maybe say Dakota Fields. Um, he's another recruit I'm pretty excited about. You know, was hearing about him getting some interceptions against Bo Nix. Uh, and, and bowl game practice so you know certainly something that kind of catches your eyes a little bit but it's like all right you know we can't we can't get too ahead of ourselves here 
Um, but uh, he's a guy that I think is made of all the right stuff. I mean, just perfect frame for this defense, 6'2", 185. Um, he can run. He can cover. I think it's just really I, – I, he was a guy I got to follow pretty closely out here in SoCal. You just want to see him play with that fire a little bit more because he's a really soft-spoken kid. Um, but I think he just needs to, you know, realize, hey, I can be that guy. Um, and, and I'm super stoked that he enrolled early because uh, I think the cornerback spot is maybe seeing a little bit of an overhaul this off season. Yeah, that's that's for sure, and that's definitely been one of the weaker points in uh, the Oregon program the last few years has been our coverage in the secondary. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so just kind of sticking with like recruiting, obviously, you know, you know, I can see the sparkle in your eye when we talk about it, something you thoroughly enjoy talking about. Um, oh, someone yeah. who's been getting a lot of smoke in the 25 class that like, you know, just watching film for myself that I get excited about just kind of seeing some versatility that takes place is Jaden Hudson, um, you know, another California kid, say safety, um, you know, what, what do you know about him? He's one that I, I personally like watching his film. Um, he looks like he brings some good stuff to the table. I'm just kind of curious to hear your opinion on him. Yeah, I think um, he's someone that is is uh, certainly an intriguing prospect, right? When we were talking about guys like Javon Holland, right? And then you look at uh, Jaden Hudson, who's also from the East Bay, Pittsburgh, California, um, where, where Jaden Rashada came out of high school. He's now at Arizona State. So just to kind of get people a little bit of background here, um, Jaden's a great player. Um, you watch his film and, uh, the ball skills are great. Um, the football IQ is clearly there. He's got a great feel for the game. His production, um, was, was really impressive. Not somebody who maybe is, is a burner in terms of just how fast they can run, but that guy eats up so much of the field. Um, and I think that's kind of the role that I could see for him in that Oregon defense is just eating up a lot of space, um, and covering a lot of ground. So, um, I think that he's a really important recruit for, for Chris Hampton, right? In this class, um, the top defensive guys have pretty much been directed to Oregon the past couple of years, right? Whether it's Dylan Williams, Braden Platt, Elijah Rushing, um, if you want to call Arizona West Coast. But um, I think that <laughs> Oregon's in a great spot there. His cousin Eric Dargan played a, at Oregon um, recently, uh, you know, back to 2014. So I guess not too recently, but he, he, there's some family connections there. Um, and, and I think that he's going to end up or at Oregon when it's all said and done. I, ho I hope so. That, that's one personally where I just like, I thoroughly enjoy watching the film, seeing what he put the product that he puts on the field. So that's one I really hope that when it's all said and done, they're really able to close on. I, I would look forward to securing the, his commitment for sure. Yeah. It's hard to bet against Tosh Lapoy when it comes to guys from the East Bay. Do you, uh, do, do you see guys like uh, Dakota Fields and, Ithi Igmanli or whatever his name. I can't remember pronouncing last name. Do do you see guys like that getting some uh first string burn at all this year? Or? Um first first team might be a little bit of a stretch right now in, in February. Um if I had to give you a, a straight up answer, um just because cornerback is easily one of the most difficult positions to play i think one of the big ways that i look at it that people have been telling me it's like you're doing everything our receiver is doing but you're doing it in reverse uh backpedaling so it's really a position that i've you know grown a lot of respect for uh recently um i, th I think you could see a good amount of those guys throughout the year you know sioni even though he's uh his first year at oregon he's a, a pretty seasoned juco guy so he's played a lot of football um, at College of San Mateo, that's one of the better junior colleges in the state. Uh, Bennett Williams, George Moore, a couple former Ducks that came through there, uh, really good coaches. So you could see Sione there, um, especially with his frame, you know, 6'4", 185, like not a lot of corners are like that. Um, but uh, if he is actually a guy that I was pretty surprised to kind of see, I shouldn't say surprised, but just to see the week that he had at the Under Armour uh, All-American Bowl, like he was a top yeah. performer that was always highlighted. I think he had a pick, if not a pick six, maybe in the in the All-American or the yeah that All-American Bowl. I saw him when um, he and Michael Van Buren, the rest of the St. Francis guys, came out to SoCal to play Bosco, and I thought if he looked good, I mean, you talk about a guy who has a really good college frame like Dakota Fields. I think if if he might have looked even better 
um, not not to get like too too uh, physically oriented here, but like if he was super cut up, big guy could run. Um, had some pretty good plays in coverage, even though I remember one of them was flagged as PI. Um, so I don't know if I'm ready to say first team reps, but I, I kind of expect those guys to to be in the mix there. Um, and they're definitely going to give some of these uh, returners like Rob Pleasant and Dalen Austin, although Austin uh, you know was kind of hurt last year too. Um, they're they're kind of gonna gonna be nipping at their heels a little bit, I think. Yeah, I, we, we we talked about the you talked about the you know some of the transfers coming in like Evan Stewart, which yeah his numbers weren't flashy at at, at A and M, but also A and M's offense wasn't exactly flashy. So I'd say his numbers were actually probably more impressive, maybe <laughs> despite the lack of offense. Yeah, I was in a freshman year and stuff like that. I was in a spaces this morning and. Um, we have a guy that uh, is in there quite regularly from A and M, and he uh, he w- was telling us that uh, the first three games that uh, Connor Wegman and Evan Stewart played together, uh, Evan Stewart had 148 yards receiving, 155 yards receiving, and like 112. And then when Wegman got hurt, Stewart's production went down. Yeah, a and M's offense has not been exactly um, the most captivating the last uh, couple of years, to say the least. So outside, like Evan Stewart and Dante Moore, which I, we expect him obviously he's going to sit behind Gabriel. We expect Gabriel to just go right into the starting spot. Is there another transfer that you see an actual transfer that you can think of just off the top of your head that's going to have like the biggest impact immediately? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I really like all the DBs that they brought in. Um, you know, if you watched Oregon play Washington at all last year, you definitely saw Jabbar Muhammad. Um, and, and I'm super stoked about him. Um, Brandon Johnson, I don't know as much about, but he, he really flashed on the tape over at Duke played with some fire guy that was around the ball a lot could come down and, and lay the hit in the run as well. If you needed him to, um, Cam Alexander, you know, I think some people saw him hop in and were kind of a little bit surprised. Uh, UTSA, um, you know, not the highest level of football necessarily. I'm not trying to slight them, but, you know, maybe not – they're not at that Oregon level. But um, I think Oregon really needed some speed in that secondary, right? You know, guys like Washington, Romo Dunze, and, and Jalen Polk did their fair share of damage. And, you know, I think that you have some good pieces there, right, with, with Jaleel Florence being one of them. But you really needed to to add some more talent at that spot because it's a premium position. So getting Cameron Alexander there is huge. But the guy that I'm most excited about, maybe maybe not most excited about, but I think a guy who could certainly make an impact is, is Jamari Caldwell, the Houston transfer along the D line. Um, I mean, when you lose the amount of guys that Oregon lost along the defensive line and, and the caliber of production that they had, Brandon Dorless, Popo Amavai, Casey Rogers, Taki Taimani. Huge Casey Rogers fan, by the way, just an amazing human being. I want to get him on my podcast, but like those guys were all studs. Um, and and um, I think you needed a guy who had some good experience, had some good production, <laughs> six one, three twenty five. He'll fit right in physically, and then they'll they'll help uh, bring some of those younger guys along that we've seen landing in the the staff sign in the twenty three and, and twenty four classes. What about you, Derek Spaz? What do you think? Because I also have to, I have to second. I am a huge Casey Rogers fan, also. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, one I thought thought was pretty intriguing is, is the Brandon Johnson one. I think that's one that kind of flies under the radar um, a little bit in the secondary there. Obviously, coming over from Duke, but you know, the, the more I was digging into him, one thing that really stuck out to me that I kind of like had to double take on and check a couple spots was he had eight tackles for loss last year. That that would have led the Ducks defense. Um, had he been a duck and done that last year. So that, that's pretty impressive coming from a nickel position. Um, so he, he's one I'm definitely kind of excited to see bring a little versatility to the secondary. Obviously, you know, that, that tells us he's able to, to crash the ball and play a factor in the run defense when need be. Um, but but for, for myself, he's one I'm kind of intrigued to see just to kind of see what his role looks like when, um, you know, when the season hits. <laughs> 